ان الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده ربي لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد فذلك we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a statement surubu for him the no, right one right. a, a statement surubu for him we we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the manner that surubu for him the most high we praise him and we thank him for the countless favors that he has bestowed upon us uh, last week unfortunately we weren't able to have a class and in our last class we looked at the power of speech and how it is very influential on the soul and the mind of mankind and we look at how how it influences one's own self in good speech it affects oneself in a good manner and evil and filthy speech affects the mind in a negative manner and this is the case with speech in general for uh, is upon the muslim to be aware of how he speaks and the things that come out of his mouth because it affects him and we looked at the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says قُلْ لِعِبَادِي يَقُولُ الَّتِي هِي أَحْسَنِ say to my servants that they should say that which is best إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانِ يَنْزَغُ بَيْنَهُمْ very shaytan cause enticement and, 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 and fitna amongst them in the shaytan kana lil insani aduwan mubina early shaytan is the mankind an open enemy so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is in this is speech in general that we should try to say that which is waqulu lil nasi husna as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another statement say to mankind that which is good uh, and we should have uh, to speak good wa kalimatu tayyiba sadaqa Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said it in a good word is sadaqa Naam. and this is something that we should try to uh, live up to and know the importance of it Naam. and the same thing with bad speech it comes in the hadith of uh, Muawiyah ibn Hayda that he says Qultu ya Rasulullah ma haqqu zawjati ahadina aday he said what is the right of one of our wives on him you know, the right that a woman has over a man. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned certain things. He said, أَن تُطْعِمْهَا إِذَا تُعِمْتَ تَفِيهَا If you eat وَأَن تَقْسُوهَا إِذَا اقْتَسَيْتَ And the clover, if you have clothing. And from the things that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, وَلَا تُقَبِّحْ وَلَا تُقَبِّحْ is لا, It means, لَا تَنْسِبْ شَيْءٍ مِنْ أَفْعَالِهَا وَأَقْوَالِهَا إِلَى قُبْحْ It means, to, it means don't make her repulsive or ugly don't say to her that she's ugly or anything that is connected to her her actions don't say that uh, it's ugly that she's ugly or her speech is ugly let alone her herself let alone her herself because no doubt this kind of speech is harmful this kind of speech is harmful and the prophet didn't give any exceptions he didn't say don't do this except if she did this or except if she did that and these kind of statements one should refrain from this week we want to look at dhikrullah and dhikrullah this is the best of speech this is the best of speech and dhikrullah is general Naam, and it includes the best of speech which is uh, the Quran and the Quran is kalam Allah the kalam is the speech of Allah and when we say that this is the speech of Allah we mean anna Allah takallama bihi sultan maharfan we mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke with it with a, with, with a voice, with his voice, with the letters that are in the Quran, na'am, that he actually spoke with this, and that is the speech of Allah, na'am, and that Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam heard this speech of Allah, na'am, and he, it, the Quran, and he conveyed it to Muhammad, this as he heard it, this exactly as he heard it, and so did also the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam heard the speech of Allah from Jibreel, and he gave it, conveyed it to his ummah, his companions conveyed to his companions. His companions, his companions conveyed to the tabi'in. The tabi'in conveyed to the tabi tabi'in. All the way to our time. This is the most precious, absolutely the most beneficial and the most precious speech ever. Nah. 
And also from it is dhikr. Naam, also is the dhikr, these statements of subhanallah, alhamdulillah. And the various ayahs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us uh, to, uh, to, to, to remember him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to remember him. And we looked at some of these uh, ayats last week, but more so this week we want to look at the importance of the dhikr and the meaning of it. Uh, for as for the dhikr of Allah, this no doubt, this is the best of speech. It's not just good speech, how you feeling, it's good to see you. MashaAllah, I miss you. I'm always happy when I see you. May Allah aid you. May Allah uplift you. The, the best of speech is the book of Allah. The best of speech is the book of Allah. And also, from the best of speech are these of God, the dhikr, remembrance of Allah. Statements that Allah, that one is reminded of Allah in His greatness. Statements that one is reminded of Allah and his greatness and his supremacy naam and his loftiness naam and this is what is in the dhikr of Allah and it's actually remembering Allah dhikr means to remember and this is what you're actually doing remembering Allah but that's not just a talaffud it's not just that it's something that's on your tongue but the meaning of it should go through your mind and be contemplated upon and should be reflected upon and this is what is intended by it both that is on the tongue and it's also the meaning is reflected upon in the heart Naam. so in reality there is no Muslim except that he mentions the name of Allah he, then he mentions the name of Allah and he mentions Allah meaning there is no Muslim except Allah, that he has dhikr and that he remembers Allah and this is mandatory in Islam Naam. his salah is dhikr Naam. and other things of this nature that when he practices religion, he can't avoid it. But the religion is itself dhikr. Nah. However, the, the believers, they vary greatly in this matter of dhikr. So much so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises them. Praises some of them and says, Allah praises, says in a praiseworthy commending manner and those who remember Allah a lot from amongst the men and the women uh -huh. and there are those that will be recognized with Allah that they are from Azakirin Allah Kathira there are those from amongst the believers who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recognizes them that there are those who remember Allah a lot now I'm so strive to be that for in it where the in it is that what purifies you and that what pushes you, and that which encourage, uh, uh, encourages you, and that which keeps you and aids you to stay firm on your religion, remind you of the greatness of Allah. Naam. And this is the purpose of it, that you don't become heedless. Naam. And become forgetful. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهَ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنفُسَهُمْ أُولَئِكَ هُمْ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ And I, don't be like those who forgot Allah, so Allah made them forget themselves. They are those that are sinful. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Istahwada alayhimu shaytan fa'ansahum dhikrullah. And shaytan has overcome them and he has made them forget the remembrance of Allah. And this is what shaytan wants to do. Shaytan wants you to forget Allah and forget his commandments and forget his prohibitions and to overlook his prohibitions and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً بَنْكَ and whoever turns away from my dhikr then he has a miserable life وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى and we raise him up يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ from his grave he's going to be he will be blind قَالَ رَبِّي لِمَا حَشَرْتَنِي أَعْمَى وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا he says, oh my Lord, why did you raise me up from my grave blind? And I was able to see. I mean, when I was in the life of this world and I was in the dunya, I was able to see. He said, like that, our signs came to you and you forgot it. And you today also will be forgotten about. And Allah doesn't forget, meaning you will be abandoned. So we don't want to abandon the dhikr of Allah. Nah, -uh. we don't want to abandon the dhikr of Allah. And what is going to aid us in remembering Allah and, and is is recognizing the reward of the dhikr 
and also contemplating on its meaning. Now, um, so part of the variance and the difference between the believers who remember Allah is that they are those who do it often. And we don't want, we don't want to make small of this. They are those who, who remember Allah often, whether they reflect the meaning or they don't. And in that is greatness. Now, um, in that is reward. Now, um, there are those that remember Allah and may pass them by. Uh, the meaning of it, na'am, or some of the meaning of it, it may pass them by, but there is a great reward still in doing this, na'am. So it, it's important for us to know that there are those in the past, and it should still be like this today, that had a wirb that they used to read every day, or his, and there was a portion of Quran that they would read every single day, na'am, and they would finish the Quran. Some people read a Jews of Quran, they're 30 Jews, and 30 parts of the Quran. If somebody reads a Jews every day, they're going to finish once a month. But some people read two Jews a day, and they finish every 15 days. Or some people read three Jews a day, and they finish the Quran every 10 days. If some people read a half a Jews of the Quran, they're not going to finish the Quran until what? Every 60 days. Now, how much do you read? Now, I'm, and some people, they wazib, they yuwasil, yastamir, they can, they're consistent on what they read every day. They're consistent on it. Now, I'm, and this keeps the zikr of Allah fresh in their hearts and re, re, it rejuvenates them. And we also encourage that those who don't understand Arabic to read it in Arabic and improve in its recitation, but also read it in English. This in it is benefit. Now, and don't make small of reading it in English because the purpose of the zikr is that you contemplate on its meaning and it is a great reward. Now, um, so, so the first thing we want to recognize, the, the variance between those who remember Allah is that there are those who do it often. And we want to concentrate on this for one second and we want to understand that those who read Quran oftenly and remember Allah often, they have it fixed into their daily schedule. Nah. It's fixed into their daily schedule. Nah. So we have from our legislation of Islam, we have Azkar al-Layl wa Azkar al-Nahar. Azkar al masa We have Azkar, dhikrs, that, uh, that we make during the day and we make during, during the night. وَذْكُرِ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ بُكُرَةً وَأَصِيلًا And there are various, various ayahs that tell us to do this. Remember your Lord, وَذْكُرْ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ And remember the name of your Lord, بُكُرَةً In the morning, وَعَصِيلًا And in the night. Now, there are various ayats, it's not necessary to mention all of them, but this is from our religion, and this is what the Prophet wasallam used to do and encourage his companions to do. And there are a number of afkar that the Muslim says every day after Fajr, before the sun comes up. After Fajr, before the sun comes up, there are a number of of cards. They're, uh, they're, they're, they're collected in, in different books now. The most popular of them would be Riyad Salihin. And the smallest of them, that's specifically with the topic, would be Husn al Mu'min, Husn al Muslim. Naam. And other than that, uh, from the books of this nature. Naam. The same thing with that night. Uh, some of the ulama say it's after Dhuhr until Maghrib. Some of them say it's after, Mag uh, after Asr until Maghrib. But it has to be said before Maghrib. Naam. And these other ones have to be said before sunrise, after Fajr. Naam. And this is something that is constant on in your life. Naam. And there's not something that you do on, on the weekdays and you leave it off on the weekend. It's something that you do every day and it's beneficial in your life. Some of them are very, uh, the, the meaning of them is, is triumphant and great and contemplating upon it is heavy on the mind and refreshing and purifying for the mind. So we want to encourage with this before we go on that there are, there, there has to be a time that you read Quran. May Allah make it easy. There has to be a time that you read Quran. There has to be a time. Every day, every day. We don't want to read Quran or remember Allah during our free time, during our spare time. No, this is a time that you have to actually make to do it. And this is not something that's far-fetched. 
This is not something that's only for the righteous. This is not something that should be just for the elite. This is not something that just should be for the students of Elm. No, every single Muslim. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, مُعَقِّبَاتٌ لَا يَخِيبُ خَائِلُهُنَّ أُقَائِلُهُنَّ ثلاثة وثلاثين تسبيحة ثلاثة وثلاثين تحميدة وأربع وثلاثين تكبيرة. There are certain things. معقبات that it means there are certain things that you say after the salah. دوبري كل صلاة as it comes in the narrations. There are things that you say after the salah. I mean, we have other we have zikrs that they're not wajib. But it's, you do it after every salah that's wajib, all the fard salah, and, and and you won't waste your time. You won't be a loser saying these things. Don't think that you're saying it and there's no benefit in it. Now, and this is what the prophet says: "Mu'akibatun la yakhibu fa'iluhuna." These things that we do after the salah, dubra kulli salah. These things that we do after the salah. The fire of the the one that does it is not in loss. He's not wasting his time. He says Subhanallah thirty three times. He says Alhamdulillah thirty three times, and he says Allahu Akbar thirty four times. Now and there are other narrations that he says Subhanallah thirty three times, Alhamdulillah thirty three times, Wa Allahu Akbar thirty three times, and then he says La ilaha illallah wa hadhu la sharika la lahu muku la alhamdu wa ala kulli shayin qadir. Now, and there are other narrations, and it's good to teach the children this, that you say Subhanallah ten times, and Alhamdulillah ten times, Wallahu Akbar ten times. And uh, the, the best way, and just mention this real quickly before we look into the meaning of some of these uh, uh, cars, to count, and to teach your children to count, is by having your hand totally open with your fingers extended, with your fingers extended. Then you're going to close your pinky, then your ring finger, then your middle finger, then your index finger, then your thumb. That's five. And then when everything is closed into a fist, then you open up your thumb, then your pointer finger, your index finger, then your middle finger, then your ring finger, then your pinky. When you open it back up, that's the number five. That's ten. Now, I'm this is the best way, and it comes in Al Bayhaqi that the Prophet can yadurab al 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 kaf. The Prophet used to hit the kaf, the palm of his hand. Nah, he used to hit the palm of his hand when he did his, did his avkar. This is the, uh, uh, the 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 clearest uh, and closest to descriptions that was uh, uh, narrated upon the Prophet So this is a good way to teach your children. Sometimes 33 might be a little too much for them. So they can say SubhanAllah 10 times, and they can say Alhamdulillah uh, 10 times, and what? SubhanAllah Allahu Akbar 10 times. It also comes in another narration. And that one that's 10 times is not just for children. Even the adults do it. The Prophet ﷺ did it. Sometimes you're going to do this. Sometimes you're going to do that. We have the tanawwa al ibadat. It also comes a narration, and you all do them all. Subhanallah, 25 times, and Alhamdulillah, 25 times, and Allahu Akbar, 25 times. Wa la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la lahu muk wa alhamdu ala kulli shayin qadir. 25 times. These are all uh, d different narrations that come about the adhkar that are after the five salah. Now, another major thing that the members, the, those who remember Allah differ in are those that reflect upon the meaning. Now, and no doubt, this is the greatest benefit. Let's look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says at the end of Surah Al-A'raf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ فِي نَفْسِكْ تضرعا وخيفة ودون الجهر من القول بالقدو والآصال ولا تكن من الغافلين. This ayat is very uh, clear. Allah subhanahu wa taala says, and remember your Lord within your own self. Remember your Lord within yourself, to yourself. تضرعا تضرعا means in humility and attentiveness. وَخِيفَةً and out of fear وَدُونَ الْجَهْلِ مِنِ الْقَوْلِ without being out loud and apparent in your speech say it to yourself 
But it had to be said, it had to be uttered on your lips. Bil Qudubi wal Ashal in the morning and at night. Wala takun min al and don't be amongst those that are heedless. Don't be from those that are heedless and are forgetful and forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding, this is the end of Surah Al-A'raf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us to remember Allah in ourselves. Na'am, it's going to affect your nafs. Na'am. But he commands it to do it attentively in humility and out of fear. And this cannot be done when you're saying it and not reflecting and not contemplating. It's not possible. It's not possible for you to remember Allah. Say, subhanAllah, walhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. Uh-huh. And to do it out of fear And to do it in, with attentiveness And humility Except that you have to concentrate on its meaning So this verse here In it is uh, Numerous benefits First is that Allah is commanding us To remember Allah in our own selves And it's not like we're saying it out loud He put, Allah said don't do it with a loud voice uh-huh. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us the condition that the heart should be in while doing this. And this can, that the condition of this heart is not possible for us to bring ourselves into this state except by contemplating on what we're saying. And then Allah even commands it that this is done during the day and that this is done during the night. Now, so... When we after the salah, and this is one of the the calming of calls, the vikas that we make is after the salah, we should contemplate on what we're saying and not just go through it quickly, subhanallah, 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 but you should say it nice and clearly, individually. It's 33 times individually. Naam. Uh, subhanallah, 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 la yakhibu qailuhunna. The one who says it is not, one of, is not going to lose out. Naam. And how, how much in a rush could you be? Naam. And believe me, don't think that you can just give the taslim after the salah. Say, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And you're going to do your other cards while you're walking to get your shoes, while you're putting your shoes on, while you're running back to get to the train or racing back to get to your job. And you're going to say, yeah, you might say it, but you're not going to be humble and fearful while you're saying So it's better just to take a minute or two to sit down and take this opportunity of humility and fear. This is a state that you have to be in that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to be in when we make this dhikr. Naam. And from another fa'idah, uh, that uh, it's permissible that you say subhanallah 33 times. Each time you say subhanallah, 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 subhanallah. And then after you finish that 33 times, then you say alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. And then after you say that 33 times, then you say Allahu Akbar 33 times as it comes in one narration. Then you say La ilaha illallah. Or you say it 34 times, but you say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. You do each one individually. Also, there's another, it's permissible that you say Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. That's one. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. That's two. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, that's three. And then you count all of that 33 times. Naam. Each one you do it just in that same order. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, that's one. And you count that to what? 33 times. If you want, then you could say, La ilaha illallah, wahduhu la sharika la, lahu mulku wal amdu ala kulli shayin kadir. Or you just say, Allahu Akbar, one more time, and it would be 34. Now, this no doubt is going to have a different effect on you from you saying subhanallah, subhanallah, subhanallah that when you saying subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allah Akbar it's going to have a different thing and, and reflection on your mind so sometimes you do it 30, you do it this way sometimes you do it that way sometimes you say it 10 times sometimes you do this one you have had a tanawa fil ibadah you have this kind of variance in your acts of worship barakallahu fikum
what we want to do now for a second is compare our dhikr and our adhkars to our du'a and to show the importance the importance of us being attentive attentive and how we should be in fear uh, of Allah making our zikrs. This is how we are when we make dua. Um, really, when you make dua and you're asking Allah to uplift from you the trouble that you're in, or you're calling Him for the goodness that you're in need of, you're going to be attentive. You know, you're going to be attentive. You're not going to just say, oh, Allah, give me the good of this world, give me the good of the half, then save me from the fire, oh, Allah, enter me into Jannah, and oh, Allah, protect my kids, and oh, Allah, give me Jannah, oh, Allah, increase my wealth, oh, Allah, give me good health. And you're not going to pay attention to what you're saying, and you're going to say it earnestly. Naam. But when you're making dua, you're going to say it earnestly. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just as he's in the previous verse, it says, وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ فِي نَفْسُكَ فِي نَفْسِكَ تَضَرُّعًا وَخِيفَةً Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded with dua in the same manner. Allah commanded with dua in the same manner. For also in Surah Al-A'raf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أُدْعُوا رَبَّكُمْ تَضَرُّعًا وَخُفْيَةً إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمَعْتَدِينَ وَلَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ بَعْدِ إِصْلَاحِهَا وَدْعُوهُ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا إِنَّ رَحْمَةَ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٌ مِنَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Allah says, call on your Lord, making dua, تَضَرُّعًا while you're attentive and humble, وَخُفْيَةً and while you're private, it's not out loud. إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُعْتَدِينَ He doesn't like those who go overboard. وَلَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ بَعْدِ إِصْلَاحِهَا And don't corrupt in the land after it has been made wholesome. وَدْعُوهُ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا And make dua to him in fear and design his reward. So Allah commands us to make dua. While we're making dua in a state of fear, asking Allah to save us from the hellfire and to be earnest about it. And when the things that you uh, desire, like gender and good health and family and good children and health and wealth and the things of this world and in the hereafter, tama'an, that you're doing it, desiring it and wanting it from Allah and craving it now, and asking Allah for it. Could you imagine if somebody's making dua and he's, he's absent-minded? Nah, you, would, you, you would think that the dua is, is, is not going to be answered. Nah, you, would, you would feel that Someone has to be very attentive when he's asking du'a. Then Allah uses the same words regarding dhikr. وَذْكُرْ رَبُّكَ رَبَّكَ فِي نَفْسِكْ تَضَرُّعًا وَخِيفَةً Allah commands us to make dhikr like this. So if you recognize how you are, when you're in need, and when you're sick, and when you make du'a for yourself, and for your loved ones, and for the calamities that the Muslim face, and for the things that they desire, and how attentive you are, this how you should be in your dhikr. All of it is dhikr. Reflecting upon the meaning of the dhikr and the reward of the greatness of the statement is what encourages us to do it. Nah. So today we want to not necessarily look at the reward, but we want to look at the, 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 the importance of it. You know, Because here when you're reflecting upon the meaning, this is when the purification it takes place. Nah. And it, uh, it directs you and encourages you with obedience and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards you. These words of dhikr are all words of praise and glorification. Ra- words of praise and glorification and sanctity. Highest of statements. There comes a hadith and the hadith is in Sahihain from the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. He says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La ahadun ahabba ilayhi al-madhu min Allah وَلِذَلِكَ مَدَحَ نَفْسَهُ There is no one that praises more beloved to him than Allah. And this is why he praises himself. Allah loves praise. There's nothing, no one, no one praises more beloved to him than Allah. Allah loves praise. He loves it. And for that reason, he praises himself. I mean, he says in his book, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, all praise is due to Allah. You know, throughout the Quran, Allah praises Himself and speaks well of Himself. Naam. And Allah loves this. So if Allah loves this action, this is an encouragement for you to do it. And this is an encouragement for that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you when you do this action. 
Naam. So it's not something that you, you're doing and it's just haphazard or something that's just something from the deen. This is the main, these are the major things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. It comes from the hadith of Abi Huraira. The hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. And this is from the bab of a fa'ida, of a benefit, that this is the last hadith in Sahih Bukhari. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kalimatani khafifatani ala lisan. There are two statements, they are light on the tongue. Thaqilatani fil mizan. They are heavy on the scales. Habibatani ila rahman And they are beloved by the most merciful. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanallah al These two statements, subhanallah wa bihamdihi, we're going to look at the meaning of subhanallah al these are two statements that are light on the tongue. It's not going to cost you anything. It's not going to be difficult for you to say it. You can say it while you're on the train. And you can say it while you're on the bus. And unfortunately, in the cities that we live in, sometimes we're on the train. There are a lot of indecent things that we have to see and hear. So it's good to stay. It's almost uh, absolutely necessary to stay in dhikr. You can say it while you're walking. You can say it while you're sitting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ Those who remember Allah where they're standing, where they're sitting, and why they're laying down. I mean, no one has an excuse to be uh, heedless and unmindful of their Lord. So we see that these two statements are light on the tongue. They're heavy on the scales, I mean, on your reward. And they are most beloved. They are beloved by Ar-Rahman. They're beloved by Ar-Rahman. I mean, it's a reason for you to acquire the mercy of Allah. They, these two statements are loved by the most merciful. So what do we benefit from that? And these two statements are beloved by the most merciful one. That we should say this. Now, and if Allah loves these statements and you say it, perhaps Allah will love you. Perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you. And we find from the hadith of Abi Huraira, radiallahu anhu fi sahih muslim, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La an aqul, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, ahabbu ilayya, mimma tala'at alayhi ashams. He said that I would say subhanallah, and alhamdulillah, and la ilaha illallah, and Allahu Akbar is more beloved to me than everything that the sun has risen over. I mean, of the whole dunya, the whole world. These statements, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam loves these statements, and this is what we want you to acquire love for these statements when you recognize its meanings. And these statements are jadir and lihada. These statements are worthy of you appreciating and, and knowing them. So we want to look at this first statement, Subhanallah. And the statement, subhanAllah, is tanzih wal, wal bara. This statement is tanzih, meaning it's freeing Allah of all shortcomings, deficiencies, mistakes, faults, errors. Allah has not wronged anyone. Allah has not oppressed anyone. He has not made a mistake. He has no shortcomings, no deficiency, no mistakes, nothing wrong. In his speech, in his decisions, in his religion, anything that he does, and in descriptions and everything, Subhanallah means that Allah is free from all mistakes, shortcomings, deficiencies, faults, errors. Nah, and it's a great statement. Nah, it's a, it's a great statement. It necessitates that everything that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala does is for a divine purpose. Nah. And this is the statement that the Prophet said, these statements are the most beloved statements to him. Um, and there are very there, there are several ayats. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran this word and uh, that which conjugates from it, Wayatsarraf Minhu in, in in the past tense. Allah says, Sabbahalilla Mafis Samawati wa Everything in the heavens and the earth has declared Allah free from uh, shortcomings and deficiencies. Everything. The trees, the mountains, the rivers, the animals, everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also uses it in the fit al and in the future tense. Yusabbihu lillahi ma fi samawati wal Everything in the heavens and the earth declares Allah free of, of, of the faults, of faults and, and shortcomings. Allah uses it in what? In the fit al-amr. Sabbihu lillahi ma fi samawati 
He commands us he commands us to to declare Allah free of all shortcomings do this to your Lord declare him free and say subhanallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses also in the mustard in the noun form he says subhanallah also tasbih these are the words that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions it in fi'al afwan in ism fa'al musabbih نعم ولولا أنه كان من المسبحين and it only comes in two ayats and the ism fa'il I don't know what you call this in English but it conveys that the person does it all the time that the action is done all the time نعم and it doesn't stop نعم and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about uh, Yunus ولولا أنه كان من المسبحين if it wasn't the fact that he was from those that always remember Allah and declared him free of any fault, he would have stayed in the belly of the whale until Yom Qiyamah. And Allah says this also about the Malaika, both of them in, in Surah Al-Surafat, the Malaika said that we are the ones that saw phone. We stand in rows before Allah. We are the ones that are always declaring Him free of fault. This is an honorable thing. Now Allah mentions this tasbih in all forms and conjugations of the word. The past and the future tense, the command verb, the noun. In, in both forms, subhanAllah and tasbih and even in ism fa'il and this shows its greatness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says تُسَبِّحُ لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ تُسَبِّحُ لَهُ السَّمَوَاتِ تُسَبِّحُ وَالْأَرُضُ وَمَنْ فِيهِنْ The seven heavens and the earth and everything that is in it declares Allah free from shortcomings and deficiencies وَإِمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ And there is absolutely anything except that it declares Allah free from fault praising him ولكن لا تفقهون تسبيحهم but you don't understand their tasbih you don't understand their declaration that Allah is free from fault نعم and in this verse it, it combined these two words together وَإِن مِنْ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّهُ بِحَمْدِهِ يُسَبِّهُ بِحَمْدِهِ this is with subhanallah connected with Alhamdulillah it means they claim Allah they declare Allah free from fault praising Him free from fault praising Him at the same time so when you say this word SubhanAllah you want to reflect upon the meaning it means that Allah is absolutely perfect He has no flaws He has not wronged you and look at the things that occur in your life look at the hardships that you go through the, the tribulations the, the problems that you go through in your life and you say when you're contemplating and you're making your friends say subhanallah and you look at the hardship this this is from Allah Allah has not wronged me Allah didn't make a wrong decision Allah it didn't do any shortcomings this is not from the deficiencies of Allah all of it is from the greatness of Allah and it aids you to accept that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for you subhanallah when you look at your life subhanallah when you became sick subhanallah when you lost your loved one subhanallah regarding your money subhanallah with the opportunity that passed you by subhanallah regarding your out subhanallah regarding your marriage subhanallah regarding your children subhanallah in your world so in your in your dunya in your deen subhanallah everything that you say subhanallah for and you're saying this 33 times for example for example you want to contemplate on every aspect of your life and say subhanallah allah has not wronged or fell short or is fought in anything that has to then do with my life now and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he uh encourages the believers to say things and to say these statements and to free Allah from fault. Now, and we don't have the time to look at all of these examples, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, He says, Walawla if the khalta jannataka, other than that, that ayah is going to come up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wazanuni if the haba mughadiban, for then the unla nakadir alehi, for nada for zulumat. Wazanuni, this is Yusuf, Yunus, I'm sorry, Yunus. 
he left his people. He was upset with his people because his people did not obey him. So he left. And Allah sent him to them. Allah sent him to them. Then he left. And he ended up in the button of the wheel. فَظَنَّ ظَنَّ هِيَ مِنْ سَيَقَّنَا He was sure أَنْ لَا نَقْدِرَ عَلَيْهِ That Allah would not uh, make the, the, uh, affairs tight for him and difficult for him. And Allah would not abandon him. فَنَادَى فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ he called while he was in the stomach of the whale in darkness. An la ilaha illa ant. There's nothing worthy of worship but you. Subhanak. You are free of fault. Inni kuntu min al-zalimin. Verily, I was from the wrongdoers. And this is the greatest of statements. Now, and this is the greatest of statements. That he is attributing the fault to himself, the wrongdoing to himself, and he's freeing Allah from fault. And it's the greatest of, uh, of statements. And this is one of the reasons for the dua to be answered. That you would say this in your dua. La ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu min al The same thing regarding the, the dua that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in his salah. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik Allahumma kfiri. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik Allahumma kfiri. Subhanak. And this is very, this is a very, very great meaning. Subhana, Subhanallah means Allah is free from fault. When you say Subhanallah, means Allah is free from fault. But when you put this pronoun on it, Subhanak, you're talking to Allah. You're saying you are free of fault. It's the most beautiful statement that you could possibly say. It's probably the most beautiful thing. When you put this pronoun on it, you're speaking to Allah. When you say Subhanak. You're speaking to Allah. You're saying you are free from fault. Now, Subhanakallahum. You are free of fault, Allah. Wa You know, I'm saying this, praising you. Allahumma kfirli. Forgive me. Meaning, I am the one that has the faults. I am the one that has the sins. I am the one who is deficient. Now, it's the most beautiful way of what? Of seeking forgiveness for Allah. By claiming that He, and declaring, declaring Him free, a fault. Nah. And there are beautiful ayats that show when this statement is said. Unfortunately, we don't have the time to look at this other statement is Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah is a statement of praise. A statement of praise. It means all the praises for Allah. All the praise, all the credit, all the good, all praiseworthy speech, all goodness and loftiness and glorious things, supremacy and greatness is for Allah. He's incomparable. There is nothing like him. He is the all hearing and the all seeing. And this shows that all goodness is from Allah. And his hand is good. All goodness is from Allah. It's all from Allah. Anything good that you have, you can only thank Allah. No. And any faults, anything that you have, you can only blame yourself. But Allah, if it's from Allah, it's all good. Whether the yakhtaruhu Allah or khayr. And that which Allah has chosen for you is better for you. No. And the statement, Alhamdulillah, Walillahi alhamd. And to Allah, it belongs the praise and the, and, the, and, and, and the med. And, 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 and commendation and praise and glory nah. and this is a statement that shows that all the good is for Allah There's n only good is, is, is attributed to him his names, his most beautiful names they are only beautiful names they are only names that convey goodness and his descriptions he only has good descriptions he doesn't have names that convey anything bad nor is he described with anything that conveys evil all of his names convey good things. He's all good. There's nothing bad about him. And these two statements go together. Subhanallah. Walhamdulillah. Subhanallah. It means that Allah is free from all faults and shortcomings. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from all faults and all shortcomings and deficiency and mistakes, meaning all the praises for him. All the praises for him. And if all the praises for Allah, and all goodness is for Allah, and all good stems, all good, it comes from Allah. And Allah is only described with good and named with good, meaning that he has no mistakes. So as the only man say, Tasbihahu yastalzim tahmeedah. Wa tahmeedahu yastalzim 
tasbiha. Praising him, saying subhanallah, or declaring him free of mistakes necessitates that all the praise is for him. And all the praise from praising him, if all the praise is due to him, the Most High, then this necessitates that he has no mistakes. And these, and, and this is why you find these two statements in, in various places connected together. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the surah, إِذَا جَاءَ النَّصْرُ اللَّهِ At the end of it, he says, فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكْ فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ Meaning, make tasbih with hamd. Meaning, declare Allah free of fault, praising Him. These two statements, we find them together, is the most dynamic statement that you say Allah is free and worthy of praise. He's all worthy of praise, therefore He has no mistakes. He has no mistakes, therefore he's all praiseworthy. Now, and in the hadith that we previously read, Kalimatani, Khafifatani, Al Nisan, there's two statements that's, that's light on the tongue, heavy on the scales, and beloved by the most merciful. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. These two statements together is enormous meaning. You are freeing Allah from fault, praising Him. Now, I mean, we find these two statements together, as we just mentioned in Surah Al Nasr. فَسَبِّحْ This is a command. فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكْ نعم. Meaning, declare Allah free from fault while praising Him for His good. Now, this is a dynamic statement. So, we want to recognize that saying Allahu Akbar after this is the, is the greatest of statements that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala absolutely has no shortcomings, no faults, no, no mistakes, Naam. And all the praise and goodness is, is, is attributed to him and all good comes from him. Naam. Then he's the greatest. If that's the case, he's absolutely the greatest. And that which is attributed to him is the greatest. He is the greatest. Naam. And anything that's connected to other than him is less than him. Naam. And his religion is the greatest. And his names is the greatest, the most beautiful name. And his descriptions are the most lofty descriptions. And his religion is the greatest. And his prophets, they are the greatest men. And his malaika are the greatest. Nah. And everything that's connected to him is great. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater. Greater than anything you have. Nah. He's, he's to be the most beloved. And he, he deserves all of the ibadah. And things of this nature. There comes a hadith. And we want to look in this hadith just to understand that is upon us to recognize the meaning and the benefit of things. And then we're going to start after this. This is from the hadith of Abi Musa al-Ashari. His name is Abdullah ibn Qais. Abdullah ibn Qais is from Yemen. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu he says, وَأَنَا خَلْفَ دَابَةِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَأَنَا أَقُولَ لَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ he said, I was riding behind the riding animal of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Fasami'ani aqu. The Prophet heard me and I was saying, La hawla wa la quwa illa billah. There's no strength and there's no power except in Allah. Faqala, Ya Abdullah ibn Qais. He said, Oh Abdullah ibn Qais. The Prophet called him. Qutul dabbeka ya Rasulullah. He said, Yes, he answers the call of the Messenger of Allah. Qala, Ala adulluka ala kalimatin من كنز من كنوز الجنة. Should I inform you or indicate to you or show you a a word that is a treasure from the treasures of Jannah? فقلت بلى يا رسول الله. I said of course, O Messenger of Allah. قال فداك أبي وأمي. And he said, May Allah, may my may my mother and father be a sacrifice for you. This is what uh, Abu Musa said to the Prophet. The Prophet said. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. In this statement that he heard Abu Musa saying, the Prophet said, "This statement is a treasure from the treasures of Jannah." Meaning, he heard Abu Musa saying this. Now he wants to magnify this statement in him and tell him the greatness of it. And we have to know the greatness of the zikr that we have. We have to know the reward for saying it and the meaning of it. Now, so the prophet heard Abu Musa saying this word, and then he attached to this liquor 
greatness. He said, should I not? And the prophet said this in a form of encouragement and to open up his mind. He asked him in the form of a question. Should I not show you a, a word that in it is a treasure from the treasures of Jannah? He said, of course. He said, this word that you were saying now. So now this word is going to be, if the Abu Muslim was already saying this, it's going to be even greater with him. And this is something that's treasured, I mean, it's gathered up for you. And the more you say it's going to be gathered up for you, and all of your other cards are going to be gathered up for you in the hereafter. This statement is a statement of, of Bara'a, and you freeing yourself from, uh, uh, and freeing yourself from credit and from goodness and conveying it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La hawla wa la quwa. Meaning there's no strength for me to be obedient to Allah. There's no power for me to stay away from sin except by Allah. It's not that I'm so smooth. It's not that because my family is so great. It's not because I'm so smart. It's not because I just I, I just have it like that. I, that's just the way I am. I, I just get good. I, I just escape because I know how to do my things. No. This is a statement that you say when you free yourself from the greatness and you want to give it to Allah. So when somebody praises you, this is a good statement to say. Now, somebody says, MashaAllah, you always do good. MashaAllah, your son is the greatest. MashaAllah, you raise your kids on it. You say, La hawla wa la quwa. You raise your sons to be grown men. Man, your, your, your parenthood is just the best. Your, 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 your recitation of the Quran is the best. Your, your khutbahs are so great. You say, La hawla wa la quwa. There's no strength for me to do these things And there's no power for me to leave off the bat Except by Allah It's not from me This is from Allah This is the most beautiful thing for you to say Naam And that you say this to yourself Naam And that you say this to yourself Is a reflection for you And a reminder for you Of the greatness of Allah And your simplicity And your weakness And that you're ever in need of Allah And it's a statement that humbles you And attaches you to Allah La hawla wa la quwa illa billah Some of the ulama say it means There's no strength for me to what? To leave off sin And there's no strength for me to even obey Allah Except by Allah Except that which Allah gives me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we want to end with this, uh, uh, uses this as an example in the story of Surah Al-Kahf. Uh, this man that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him nice two gardens, and the gardens had uh, date trees in it, and it had rivers flowing, and it had grapes in it, and it had wealth, and all of it changed. Because the man thought that it was from him. وَدَخَلَ جَنَّتُهُ he entered his Jannah and he became arrogant and thought that this was just things for him and that he would just had it like that and that this was meant for him and that these things would never perish. The point being, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْلَا إِذْ دَخَلْتَ جَنَّتَكَ قُلْتَ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهِ لَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ إِنْ تَرَنِ أَنَا أَقَلَّ مِنْكَ مَالًا why? When you entered into your garden, why didn't you say, MashaAllah? When you were surprised about the nitma that you have, when you were surprised of the nitma that you have, when you would look at this greatness that you have, why did you say, This is what Allah wanted? MashaAllah. This is what Allah wanted. What Allah wanted, MashaAllah, can. That which Allah wanted existed. This is from Allah. La quwwata illa billah. There is no strength and no power to make these things happen except by Allah. Why didn't you say this when you saw your God? Nah. And this is upon us to see when we see greatness in ourselves and the things that we have in our actions or we're commended for things that we say. La hawla wa la quwwa illa billah. This is from Allah. I have no strength. I have no strength to bring this. I have no strength to ward off evil. No, except by Allah. This is what we want to look at today. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who remember him. No, and it's upon us to try to gather the meaning of these statements that we say. And that we say it, when we say it, we say it as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded. وَذْكُرْ رَبُّكَ وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ Remember Allah in yourself 
Tadarru'an. Tadarru'an means that you're humble and attentive. Wa khifatan arafir. So how, what, what position are you going to be in while you do this? It's better after the salah that you sit down. It's only going to take you another minute, yeah, akhi. Now, um, and that, that you and that you have you teach your children to sit down, teach your children to have this khushur and attentiveness in their salah and after the salah. Sometimes after the salah, our children speak immediately. It's like salaikun Abdullah Salaikun. When are you gonna go out to that? When is that Dabdana? That even after the salah we have to teach our children there is no talking after salah. Don't get up from your place after salah. Sit down. Nah. Some people after Salah they uh they immediately open the Quran and they start reading. And they're, 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 no doubt the Quran is good, but if there's an ibadah that's connected to a specific time, that ibadah is always better than another. Nah, that ibadah is always better than another. For example, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, uh the dua that's between the adhan and the qama is not rejected. So it's, it's not best that after the adhan is called that you make two raka'ahs and you grab a mushaf and you read it until the iqam is called. But it's, this is the time that your dua is, is answered and you're the one that has all these complaints and all these needs and all these aches and all these ailments and all these complaints. Naam, this time for you to make dua. It's better at that time for you to make dua. And after the salah, it's not best that you just grab a Quran right after Fajr and start reading it. It's better for that you to make your adhkars. Mu'aqibatun la yakhibu fa'iluhunna. Dubra kulli salah. There are things that you say after the salah. The one that says it is not going to be at loss. Naam. 33, subhanAllah, 33 times. Alhamdulillah, 33 times. Wallahu Akbar, 34 times. Now, and that when we say this, we want to be attentive. We don't want to be, we don't want to say it and stop and speak to your brother and stop and do this and looking at your phone while you're doing it. No, all of that, it, it bars your own soul from benefit. This is what we want to benefit from the day. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to aid us in our fear and to increase us in dhikr and decrease us in reflection of his greatness. In the wali dhalik wal qadir alayhi. صلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم